This right here is a photo of an American solitary confinement jail cell. And you might not believe this, but as of today, which is now a full year and a half after January 6th of 2021, there are somewhere between 40 to 50 people who are, right now as we speak, sitting in solitary confinement. Let me repeat that. For the past 18 months or so, there have been people sitting in solitary confinement where they are quite literally in a holding cell just like this one by themselves for 22 hours a day. And for many of them, this is pretrial detention, meaning that they have been holed up in solitary confinement awaiting an actual trial, which is quite remarkable given the fact that the Sixth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution guarantees American citizens the right to a speedy and public trial. However, despite the fact that the media in this country have by and large ignored these people, there are still some activists trying to bring these people's plight to light. And in fact, along that line, here in New York City of all places, there was a rally held in order to bring awareness of these, peop- these prisoners' situation. My team and I were there on site in order to record the speeches, as well as to interview the organizers, the attendees, as well as the speakers, in order to get not only an idea of what's really happening, but also what all this means for the future of our country. Take a listen. Right now, there's people from January 6th being persecuted by the United States government for the what they're calling an insurrection. Most of them are peaceful protesters. And as we speak today, they're being held in Washington, D.C., in a jail in solitary confinement with no bail. So actually, so for the viewers who don't know what's going on, can you kind of set the stage for them about these people who are still being held? What happened to them on January 6th? What happened to them afterwards? And what's been happening for the last five or six months now? Sure. So there's been... As everyone knows, or I'm hoping everybody knows, there's been about 500 arrests pertaining to January 6th. Right now, they have 50 people in Washington, D.C. in a special pod where they're detaining them and they're keeping them in solitary confinement and they don't have bail. Uh, they get, they go out of their cells once a day to take a shower and some days they don't even get that. Um, they're serving them breakfast at 2.30 in the morning. They don't have access to their lawyers. They don't have access to the evidence being used against them. A lot of them are rightfully so, starting to lose their minds. How could they be fit to stand a fair trial if they're in jail and literally going crazy? It's very sad. A lot of them are decorated vets and they very, feel very betrayed by the U.S. government that they're putting them in this situation, that they've arrested them and they're holding them and they've never been convicted of a crime yet. Their trial date is not even set and they're being held without bail. It's crazy. A lot of Americans don't know this is going on, and people need to know this is going on. They're treating them like domestic terrorists. Most of them were only arrested for trespassing, for disorderly conduct. A couple couple of them have violent charges against them, like maybe throwing something or pushing past a police officer. That doesn't mean they don't have due process rights. That doesn't mean just because you broke something or you were violent, you should be held without bail in solitary confinement for months on end with no trial date in sight and that you don't have due protection rights under the Constitution. So they're not treating them like they're American citizens. Whether or not they just happen to walk into the Capitol building, in some cases, some of the detainees down in D.C. didn't even enter the building, or they actually pushed a cop or broke something, they deserve due process rights just like every other American. And they're not being treated that way. Do you know what like actual like legal justification they're giving for keeping them? Because it seems like with the crimes you listed, five months of solitary confinement is not justified. It's completely unprecedented. The lawyers that we speak to on a daily basis are completely shocked. They've never seen anything like this. They said it's just completely unprecedented. The charges that are being trumped up against them are, are ridiculous. Um, so uh, their justification is they're trying to say it was an insurrection, but yet nobody's been charged with insurrection. They're trying to prove some sort of conspiracy, but they can't because that whole thing that happened on January 6th was sort of, uh, it it came, it was a spur of the moment. Everybody was passionate. It was not, it was not planned out. So they're trying to prove that some of these groups were in a conspiracy. What kind of conspiracy comes to the U.S. Capitol with no weapons and with no plan whatsoever? Everybody knows it was not an insurrection. Therefore, there was no conspiracy for this. People were disorderly. People trespassed at worst. Okay, and they should not be held in solitary confinement without bail. No trial date in sight. Terrible conditions. Mold, spiders, like the stuff we hear is crazy. Not getting their mail. I personally have called the jail myself inquiring why certain inmates that I've sent things to has not gotten their mail. And I literally had to get into so many arguments with them before they finally handed them over their mail, which was postdated back to May. So they're not getting their mail, that's a federal offense. And everybody knows that of prisoners I've talked to in general say that mail is the one thing that keeps them going to keep their mind, you know, hearing from people on the outside world. So they're not getting their mail and they're deteriorating mentally 
and they're going to plea bargain to some crazy charges because they're not going to want to go to trial, because they're not going to be fit to stand trial, because they're being held in solitary confinement and tortured. I mean, given the fact that if, if they're only a flight risk, let's say, that wouldn't justify solitary confinement, and, and nor, nor, would, nor would the other if it's five months of solitary confinement without bail. I, I don't know. Like, the fact that they're saying they're a flight risk is crazy because who would be a flight risk that was charged with trespassing and disorderly conduct, possibly assaulting a police officer? They weren't charged with murder. They weren't charged with insurrection. And they weren't charged with any crazy criminal charges. They're very, you know, on the scale of criminal charges, they're kind of on the low end. So they're not flight risks. Most of them are American and they don't have anywhere to go but here. So I don't believe that for a second that they're flight risks. And the other, what was the other thing people were saying? It was... They're, they're potentially dangerous. The fact that they're saying they're potentially dangerous is crazy to me. None of these guys, the majority of these guys have no criminal background whatsoever. They have no violent history. They're not dangerous. They've, the media has painted them to be dangerous and, and, and portrayed them to be dangerous. People, my own friends and family will say to me, oh, they're dangerous, they're, they're insurrectionists. And I because they watch the news all day long. They watch the mainstream media all day long, and this is what they are, they're telling you to believe, that these guys are, uh, quote unquote, white supremacists that conspired to take over the government, which is the, the opposite of the truth. They were there for a totally different reason. They were there to protest an election that they felt was stolen in a peaceful manner for the most part. And at worst, they were disorderly, they trespassed, and some of them got out of hand, broke things, Maybe a few of them assaulted a police officer. That doesn't define all of the, the, the prisoners that are in there right now. And that still doesn't mean that they should be treated the way that they're being treated right now as terrorists. No bail, solitary confinement, no access to their attorneys, no trial date in sight for trespassing. This isn't America. It's crazy. And nobody knows about this. When I tell people about this, they're in shock that this is happening in America. They think this is something that happens in Russia or China when it's happening here on American soil. And the world is laughing at us right now. They really are. Now, it goes without saying that what you just watched was only a part of that interview. Because frankly, there is quite literally no easy way to publish the full interview here on YouTube. Especially given the fact that the latter part of the interview veered into some, let's say, sensitive areas. However, if you'd like to watch that interview in its entirety, simply head on over to Epic TV and you can watch the full episode. That episode, by the way, is close to a full hour long. And besides the full interview with Professor Miller, it also includes speeches from investigative journalists, a man who was quite literally fired from his job for just being in Washington, D.C. on January the 6th, as well as interviews with the organizers who are currently interacting with the prisoners in solitary confinement, and they were able to shed some light on their conditions. If you'd like to check out that full episode in its glorious entirety, you can do so over on Epic TV, our awesome no censorship video platform. The link will be right there at the very top of the description box. And now, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video. All right, the sponsor of today's episode is a phenomenal company called AMAC. That's A-M-A-C, and it stands for the Association of Mature American Citizens. They are quite literally one of the fastest growing conservative organizations in all of America, and you should consider joining for three main reasons. The first is the money-saving benefit, because as a member of AMAC, you get access to a ton of discounts at many different verticals. Things like vitamin stores, restaurants, retail shops, and so on and so forth. If you want to check out the full list, it's pretty exhaustive, you can do so over on AMAC's website. The second benefit is that you get exclusive access to the AMAC magazine. It'll be delivered directly to your doorstep and it contains phenomenal coverage as well as deep analysis. And then the third benefit, the one that people say is their favorite, is that AMAC fights for your values over on Capitol Hill. In fact, you can check out the online version of this on their website. It's the AMAC Action Advocacy Annual Report and it shows exactly what they're doing on Capitol Hill in terms of fighting what they call the socialist storm that's brewing in this country. So head on over to amac.us forward slash facts matter and sign up today. I'll also throw a link down in the description box below. And now lastly, I wanted to mention just how difficult it is about getting the solitary conf uh, confinement prisoners plight into light. Because about two weeks ago, I had a phenomenal interview with Mr. Jake Lang, who has been in solitary confinement for about the last 12 or so months now. And it was a phone interview because he is currently in jail, but he gets about an hour or two break every, every day to go outside of solitary confinement. So we timed it out perfectly. We had a 30 minute phone interview and it was good. And we're waiting to publish it because we're working on a long form uh, documentary about January the 6th. So the interview was gonna be part of that documentary. And then after we published it, we would publish the interview as a standalone feature as well. 
However, wouldn't you believe it? Just earlier today, I got a phone call from one of Jake Lang's friends who, who was outside of prison, and she told me that Jake received a letter from the prison saying that he's breaking his terms by speaking to the Epic Times. Think about that. He's been sitting in jail in solitary confinement for, I believe, over a year now, over 12 months. And his trial is not until January of 2023. And we had an interview where he described to us the kind of conditions that he's living under. And then we reached out to the, uh, to the jail as well. We wanted to just get an idea of why they're holding him, quite literally, what their rationale is for holding them for this long. But instead of getting back to us, they instead sent a letter to Jake saying, hey, don't talk to the media. So that is just the reality of how difficult it is to get these people's stories out. So if you want to check, if you want to check out the full episode with all the interviews with the people who are organizing these events and who are actually speaking and interacting with the people in solitary confinement, I think it's a phenomenal resource. So you can at least get a picture of what's happening behind the scenes because it's, again, very difficult to get those stories out. Again, so that link will be right there at the top of the description box. I hope you check it out. Then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed, and I believe most importantly of all, stay free. Thank <laughs> you.